Mark Griffith here and welcome to Biodiversity Shorts. We're here today on the northeastern coast of Tasmania and we're going to be having a closer look at some soldier crabs. At the moment, because I'm walking around, they've all hidden themselves away. But if you're quiet and remain still, you'll see hundreds of them coming out on these mud flats. Let's wait a little bit and have a closer look. Let's go. Now it's understandable if they are a little shy as us humans will readily use them as fishing bait and I was very lucky to capture this straggler burrowing himself into the sand. Their collective vision is excellent helping them to hide from other predators such as these Pacific gulls or these pied oyster catchers which will readily make a meal of any soldier crabs they find. Now it usually takes between 5 and 10 minutes for the soldier crabs to re-emerge once they are hidden and they most probably sense vibration as well because you have to be very still before they'll come out again. Once safe, they do what soldier crabs do best. They march. It's interesting to observe that soldier crabs are the only type of crab that walk forwards. If you look carefully, you can see that they gather up water and sand into their mouths as they move along. So what do soldier crabs eat? I'm glad you asked. Here I've got a sample of some of the sand and mud that the soldier crabs were feeding on. And we've got here a microscope and I've put a little bit on this slide and let's take a closer look. Although sand under the microscope is incredibly beautiful, I was initially very disappointed with the lack of life that I was seeing. I was seeing nothing but slide after slide of inanimate objects. Quartz, coral, shell fragments, and even the occasional tiny gemstone. Which is not too surprising given that Tasmania is famous for its rubies and sapphires. After many slides, eventually I did find life in the sample. First up was this very small and fast moving protozoa. Now I am by no means an expert and I have made mistakes identifying microscopic creatures in the past. If you would like to help me out and can identify any of these creatures, let me know in the comments below. I found a few different worm-like creatures wriggling about. And I also found this leech-like creature, which I thought was particularly interesting. Watch how effortlessly it moves amongst the sand grains. Though still very small, I found one more, much larger creature in the sample, which is also potential prey for the soldier crabs. You can just make him out moving across there. But I'll leave this guy to another video, because I ended up spending quite a few hours filming this little critter. Back to the star of our video. Now, because I wasn't able to get very good footage of these guys actually feeding, I'm going to use a model to uh, describe how they feed and it's very interesting how they do it. Imagine the rocks here are sand grains and the cashews and plums are potential soldier crab food. Behind those two large mouth parts is a cavity into which the crab scoops up sand and water. With the cavity full, the crab agitates the mixture. Now this wasn't an ideal model because I had to stop and top up the water, but it did work. As you can see, the food has been brought to the top and this is where the crab's mouth is. The crab eats this food and it ejects the rest of the sand as a small pellet. 
This is a different beach in southern Tasmania, and these pellets are dead giveaways that there are soldier crabs about, as are these holes from which the soldier crabs have emerged. So go and have a look at your local beach at low tide. Maybe you've got soldier crabs there that you are not aware of. Now back to our original beach in northern Tasmania. This time lapse shows the crabs returning from the low tide mark back up to an area where they start to dig burrows. The way they dig their burrows is different from how they escape from predators. In this case they use a spiralling motion and as they go in they build a little wall around themselves. So the end result is they are fully covered in sand and they also have a small air pocket with them as well. Now the theory is that they are primarily air breathers and they use this pocket of air to breathe as the tide comes back in. Now I have seen soldier crabs survive in a bucket of sand and seawater without such cavities and they'll last for several days if the water is refreshed. So I have a theory that this mini igloo around the soldier crab is simply making it easier for him to dig deeper into the sand. Imagine trying to dig deeper into the sand with, when you're surrounded by sand as well. It would prove to be very very difficult but with a little bit of a gap around you you'll be able to easily dig further down and continue pushing sand back up above your head. So that's just my theory, it's not proven in any scientific way, although it would be a very interesting project to investigate further. The tide is on its way in so we're going to have to leave it there. If you've enjoyed this video please subscribe and have a look at the links below, there are many more videos to have a look at. Cheers, I'll catch you next time.